Hi, this is a video on how to use a Stream Deck to control the MX output. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's start. To begin with, I've got here a Stream Deck with me and let's say we have a use case to use the Stream Deck to control some kind of DMX desk or any software or device that accepts DMX input. Now, there are multiple ways to do this and I'll show you uh, two alternatives. But of course, let's start with uh, the project. So create a new project, give it a, uh, give it a name. Stream Deck to DMX and start by adding elements to your project. So the first one I will add is the Stream Deck. Add it to your project, put it when you want it, select it from the list, make sure that the right device is selected and enable it. And when you enable it, you will notice that the actual device will show black. So this is the default state of the device. Uh, we can actually uh, edit the state of these buttons to edit the images that are shown in each button. To do that, uh, double click the element. Okay, so in this screen, you will have three different modes to edit, the on, off, and initialization. The first two uh, are basically the aspect of the buttons when they receive an on or off feedback from the functions they are assigned to. The last one is basically the default state of the button. So when you first enable the Stream Deck element, this is the aspect of the buttons. If they never receive any feedback, that's the status that they will stay on. So for this purpose, let's say we, will, we want to use the first button to control CO2. So pick a background color, put CO2 in the text, adjust the size to the size that you want and just click the button. This will be the state of the CO2 button. Let's edit also the off state and the on state. So for the off, I want it red, but saying CO2. And the on state, I want it green, but also with the CO2 text in it. And coming back to live, you will see now that this is on the default state, okay? To generate DMX inside show cockpit, there's a DMX generator element uh, that you can add and you can enable it right away. You will see that it, it starts generating some output right away. Uh, currently all the channels are at zero and now we will link the Stream Deck element to this generator. And what we will control in the generator is a channel flash. We want to control channel number one and we want to flash it to the maximum DMX value and we want to do it using this button. If you click the button physically, it will highlight in the list, which is easier to see. So if you come back to elements, you now have a link between these two. And if you click the button, you will see that there is a trigger on the DMX generator with the DMX channel flash. Okay, so how do we get now the DMX out of show cockpit to uh, the physical world or to the network? Let's say you want to input on a physical DMX plug in your desk, then you need to get the DMX out physically too. One way to do it is to use the open DMX element. You select your open DMX device from this list. You select the, fre the refresh rate you want you can enable it and you can basically link the generator to the OpenDMX. And now the OpenDMX function we are interested in is the DMX Universe Sync and we can link it to the DMX Universe Sync of the generator by clicking here. So at this point, we've got the button controlling the channel number one of this DMX Universe being generated here in the generator. So now let's say you want to add a secondary output, not a physical one, but you want to send this DMX data via the network. Add an artnet output element to your project. Check your settings on the right. So select your IP address for the network 
you are interested in using. Select if you want broadcast or unicast, the DMX universe you are interested in. Let's use the first one for now and enable your element. Now you just have to link the generator to this new element. Click here, click the universe sync function and click on the DMX universe sync control here of the generator. Now you've got the generator sending the same signal to both the OpenDMX and the Artnet output. And you've got some redundancy here already. And now when you click the button, you will see all the links that we have created here. If you double click the Artnet output, you can even see a representation of all the uh, output channels. So if I press the CO2 button, I will see our first channel. Uh, being at full, and if I release, I'll see it coming back to zero. Um, we can edit the um, we can edit the channel number by coming back to mapping and clicking on our current mapping for this button. Uh, if we click it, we can change, for example, the channel to channel number five. Click it again to stop editing. Come back to elements. Double click the Artnet output and try it out. So now we are controlling channel number five. All right, so let's say you don't want both outputs at the same time. How can I use also the Stream Deck to control which output I want? That's a nice use case. Um, so there are also a couple of ways to, to do it. Uh, let's see the more straightforward one. So first things first, we will edit the, the layout of the of two buttons on the Stream Deck to display DMX and Artnet. So we know what each button do. Let's do the labeling. So edit initialization. Let's make them orange. First one DMX here. And the other one is Artnet. Have to bring down the size. Artnet here. Okay. Come back to live and back. And now we can link directly the Stream Deck to the OpenDMX, for example. And our button 1.4, which is labeled as DMX, will basically enable the OpenDMX. And the last button will disable it, so link the disable element of the OpenDMX. And now we'll do the opposite for the Artnet output. If we create a new link from the Stream Deck to the Artnet output, you will also be able to control the Artnet output element from the Stream Deck. So we will enable it using the last button, which is button 1.5, and we will disable it using button 1.4. So you'll see here on the right on the mapping, it's pretty easy to see that Button 1.4 is going to enable OpenDMX and disable Artnet, and button 1.5 is going to disable OpenDMX and enable Artnet output. And we can already try it out. So clicking DMX enables the DM OpenDMX element, and clicking Artnet only enables the Artnet output. That's one way to do it. So now I'm going to show you a different way to switch between the OpenDMX and the Artnet output. We'll do this switch on the signal flow. We'll be able to remain, to, to keep these elements enabled at all times, but we will basically flow the signals in a different way. So to do that, we are going to resort to pages. So our page number one on the generator is going to send data to the OpenDMX and I will clear the mapping for the Artnet output on page one. Page two, I will create this connection. And now we are connected on page two to Artnet output. If I come back to page one, I can see the signal now flows to the OpenDMX. And now the trick is to change the page of the generator instead of enabling and disable the output elements. So to do that, uh, you can also double click the current link between the Stream Deck and the generator, double click it, click on change element page, uh, 
change type is go to, go to page one on button one four, which is the open DMX one and change to page two when clicking on one five. If you now come back to elements, you can try it out. So now we are on page one. If I click the Artnet button, it changes to page two and starts sending DMX data to page two. If I click the fog button, you will see that the signal is flowing to the Artnet. If I change to open DMX, the signal now flows to the open DMX. Now let's, let's add just an extra thing. We want to see some feedback when we click the CO2 button, right? Um, because the function we have assigned to, in this case, the DMX channel flash does not provide feedback the button will stay at its initialization state. We can basically fake uh, button feedback when we click it by using an extra element. So create here the type feedback and you'll see the button flash feedback. Add that element, enable it and let's link now the stream deck to this button flash feedback. You'll notice now there's a function called button connector on this button flash feedback, which has this little icon here, the bolt icon. It says that it provides feedback. So there's nothing else this function does actually on the button flash feedback element. It basically provides an on feedback when you press the button and an off feedback when you unpress it. The idea here is that you assign a different button ID for all your buttons so they, stand, they stay independent or you can also assign the same ID if you want them to do the same feedback. And now the trick here is we are going to map this button connector of the button flash feedback element to your first button as well. So your first button now does two things. It changes the DMX channel flash on the DMX generator but also triggers the button connector function of the button flash feedback, which in turn, this special element basically is going to feedback on and off data when you click, when you press and when you unpress the button. So let's see it in action. If we now click this button, we will see the button green. That's what we selected for the on state. And if we release the button, it's now it's now red. So that's how you can fake button feedback if you are assigning to a function that doesn't provide feedback by default. And that's it uh, for today. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. Feel free to drop a comment if you'd like to see other tutorials. Give, give us suggestions for tutorials you'd like to see. And also um, join our Facebook community. Follow our social media pages to stay up to date. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video. Bye.